The first thing you should notice, uh, of course, about an alkene is a double bond. And I'll just draw one, looks like this. And that it's uh, reactive. So this is an alkene. How do you know it's reactive? Well, there is uh, either a double bond or a functional group on it. There's a source of electrons. If you just have an alkane, it's kind of a dead end in organic chemistry because uh, there are no functional groups, there are no double bonds. But if you have a source of electrons, then um, you have a reactive molecule. What's your source of electrons? Well, of course, it's got to be these guys here, this uh, pi bond. And the reason why that is is because uh, single bonds rarely break. Uh, but if you have double bonds, this pi bond can be broken with uh, a lot less energy and it can act as a source of electrons. So, of course, the, the, the reaction uh, between different molecules with their outermost electron creates new molecules. So, this guy's alkenes are pretty good candidates for uh, a lot of different reactions because of the two electrons that occupy this additional double bond. So, let's say uh, I draw in um, the fact that there is an H here, which will become, uh, which will be important in a minute. And I undergo an addition reaction. with this alkene by adding HBr. If you're ever stuck in a reaction, um, if you're not sure what to do, well, let's, let, let, we, we know that there is a double bond here, so that's our source of electrons. So anytime you have a source of electrons acting on something else, uh, it's probably going to be our nucleophile. So let's say that these are nucleophilic. And this will probably, of course, going to be our, our electrophile. What uh, makes this molecule or part of the molecule behave as an electrophile or uh, become electrophilic? Well, we know that that is, uh, by definition, electrophile is electron deficient. So is there anything that can make this, uh, or is there anything that's electron slightly electron deficient here? Sure there is. If you remember your periodic table, you know bromine is electronegative. So what's going to happen is this um, this bromine, since it's electronegative, is going to be a little bit, uh, have a little bit of an increased electron density surrounding it, pulling uh, the electron density of this, of this single bond here, pulling these two electrons a little bit closer towards the bromine, making the H a little bit delta plus or slightly electrophilic. So this double bond is going to act on the hydrogen because it's always, again, in chemistry, it's always about uh, minuses moving to pluses. So with that, let's draw something uh, It's going to look like this. Let's say this is going to go here. And then uh, this, uh, the electrons from this double bond are going to push... those electrons there. So in essence uh, this molecule is going to abstract a proton and then push the electrons that were from this double bond uh, towards the bromine. So what you're left with is this. You're left with now a single bond, double bonds broken. I'm going to draw that methyl group in there. I'm going to draw that H that was attached, uh, that original H that was attached here, and then I'll draw this, uh, I'll draw the new H in green, since it's green over here. There. Now, this, uh, these two electrons from this double bond, um, actually uh, broke away to form a bond with this uh, hydrogen here, right, that's what we have here. So what's left behind? Well, there has to be a positive charge left behind because what's happened is these two electrons actually pivoted to create the new bond. 
So now they're over here. So instead of being, again, down kind of in this way, they're over here. So what's left behind is a positive. Since that one electron that used to be there as part of the double bond left. All right. The second electron that was part of this double bond kind of just, it kind of just swiveled. All right, so it's still attached to this carbon here. All right, but again, of course, there is from from this uh, from the second electron, it left here. So now we got to put a positive charge there. So now essentially we have a carbocation. All right. Now, uh, hopefully you're asking why uh, the hydrogen attached here and not here. Well, the reason is because of Markovnikov's rule. And what Markovnikov's rules states is that H's go with H's. H's go with H's. So since there were more hydrogens attached to this carbon here, this H is going to want to go to attach to this carbon. So now we have an additional hydrogen here. And the reason is because when you have this sort of, um, I guess I can call it like an intermediate uh, compound, uh, it forms a carbocation which is more stable because uh, instead of a hydrogen attached to this carbon, we have a, another methyl group. And of course we know that this becomes a tertiary carbocation which is stable. Tertiary carbo cations are more stable than if we were to put the, um, we were to make a secondary carbocation, putting the positive charge here. And the reason why that is is because alkyl groups are electron donating groups and they help to kind of push through an inductive effect. There's kind of a pushing towards this positive charge helping to stabilize it. So again, tertiary carbocations are stable. That's why my Kopnikov rules works and it just go with H's if you're not sure uh, how the double bond adds to the HBr. Right. And uh, off to the side, remember that since this bromine, uh, since these electrons are pushed towards the bromine, we have Br- minus floating around over here. And of course, again, pluses, uh, minuses always move towards uh, pluses, so our final step is going to be this guy going over here. So that's supposed to be an arrow. And what we're finally left with is this compound here. And if we want, we can you know, maybe draw on our H's. It's not necessary though. But if you want to do some record keeping, that's fine.